the opportunity to talk about how harnessing the power of machine learning can be used uh, to titrate drug infusions in the operating room and ICU. My name is Vasova Kovacheva, and I'm an attending anesthesiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital. As an expert in obstetric anesthesiology, I help a lot of mothers deliver their babies safely and comfortably at the Brigham. A common problem in the labor and delivery suite, operating room, and ICU is titration of drug infusions. In a number of clinical situations, the patients need a constant amount of medication, for example, to keep their blood pressure normal. In those cases, we need to give just the right amount of drug. Giving too much or too little will have um, unwanted adverse consequences. In addition, as the patient's condition changes, we may have to change the amount of drug that we're giving. And in practice, this is done manually by using an infusion pump and dialing up and down the rate. And we do this in a very busy clinical environment with a lot of noise, a lot of alarms. It's easy to get distracted. Eventually, we arrive at the best number for that patient after a trial and error. So the gap in knowledge that we're working to address is titration of drug infusions safely and efficiently so that we deliver just the right amount of drug to the patient. We're creating an automation system that we use real-time input from the anesthesia monitor and feed it into our machine learning algorithm. That algorithm will predict how much medication the patient will need in the next moment and then direct an infusion pump which would deliver it to the patient. We envision that our system will augment and also be supervised by the physician at all times. Our pilot version is designed to be able to control maternal blood pressure during C-section. To prepare for a C-section, the anesthesiologist administers spinal anesthesia to the mother. As a side effect of the local anesthetic, maternal blood pressure starts to drop. In our, low maternal blood pressure is associated with significant side effects, both for mother and baby. The stakes are very high. To prevent that, the anesthesiologist start infusion of medication, a vasopressor called phenylephrine. If we give too much phenylephrine, maternal blood pressure will go too high, and that would also be associated with adverse events. In addition, different patients react to the same amount of medication differently. So our typical practice is that at the time of spinal administration, we start phenylephrine infusion for all patients. Next, we monitor the blood pressure, vital signs every minute, and every minute we calculate how much phenylephrine to give to that patient. For those calculations, we use the pharmacokinetics of the drug, as well as how much we have given so far, the trend in blood pressure, and also the time from the spinal. We do this while taking care of an anxious, awake patient, preparing for a major surgery, and doing a lot of things simultaneously. In a couple of minutes, the math becomes too complex for any human to handle, and unfortunately, it happens that we under or over treat the patient, resulting in dangerously low or dangerously high blood pressure. That's why we're designing our uh, machine learning algorithm to be able to achieve smooth hemodynamic control for the mother. We anticipate that this system will be able to be used for all patients presenting for C-section and even with medications other than phenylephrine because there is a simple conversion factor for, between different vasopressor drugs. For me, having this will be an amazing superpower. My patient will have better blood pressure control and I can focus on other aspects from the clinical care. Now, I work at the Harvard Hospital, and we are fortunate to have a lot of resources. 
However, there is many areas in rural United States or other countries where there is a severe shortage of anesthesiologists. For example, in some places, one anesthesiologist has to take care of three different operating rooms with three different patients at the same time. If this would be great for me, imagine what superpower it would be for them. We see a tremendous opportunity to improve patient care and decrease cost. In the United States alone, there is 1.25 million C-sections done every year, and that number is even larger for the rest of the world. About 75% of those patients are at risk for developing low blood pressure. And low blood pressure in the mother will be associated with lightheadedness, nausea, and even loss of consciousness. In rare occasions, our scheduled elective C-section may turn into an emergency, and we may have to even induce general anesthesia to the mother, which can lead to prolonged recovery and higher rate of complication. Low maternal blood pressure in the baby is associated with acidemia, tachypnea, and even risk for poor developmental outcome. About 3% of those babies may need to go to neonatal ICU. So overall, the problem of optimal blood pressure control for mom during C-section results into higher risk for complications, longer recovery, and also poor mother-child bonding. In the United States alone, it leads to over $100 million of expenses every year. So far, we have been working on this project for two years, and we have hit a number of milestones. We have created a large, uh, fully annotated database in collaboration with the Center for Data Science. And this was the most challenging part of this project because when anesthesiologists take care of an emergency, as is high or low blood pressure, we're focused on patient care, and our records are too imprecise. So that's why we took extra care to create this database with 15,000 unique data points. In addition, we're currently developing the machine learning algorithm with collab in collaboration with the Center for Data Science. We have also established contacts with industry and signed CDA with two of the largest companies in the space. We have laid the groundwork for a phase one trial, and we have filed for a provisional patent. In the future, we intend to trial our algorithm for other surgeries done under spinal anesthesia, for example, knee hip replacement. Eventually, we are going to connect our algorithm to the electronic health record and take advantage of all information available for the patient. We will also add genetic data. That will result into truly personalized drug administration giving the right amount of drug for our patient in that particular clinical situation. In the future, we also intend to create algorithms for other drugs, for example, propofol for sedation and insulin in ICU. We have assembled an outstanding team and we have all resources we need in order to succeed. We're currently working on the machine learning algorithm and we plan to seek seed funding for our phase one trial. We envision that our system will increase patient safety, decrease cost of care, and eventually transform the way we administer anesthesia and critical care. As a physician, I can't wait to have this superpower. Thank you.